Hey everyone, it's Summit Falconhead, and I'm back with another tournament match. And today we're gonna be doing <laughs> we're gonna be doing a match in the Thunderdome. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> in, in corner one, we've got Sammy, and in corner two, we've got also Sammy. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyways, um, Quack Cup three was um launched for June, I guess. <laughs> um, and the gimmick for this time is it's just mixed base fog, which I love mixed base and I love fog, so <laughs> I am down for this uh, tournament, actually. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, and what's funny about uh, this this time is I'm actually in Division 1 for once. So, I mean, this might be spoiling a little bit, but as you can see here, I'm in, <clears throat> I'm in Division 1. <laughs> Fucking finally. <laughs> it might be because uh, if you go to the tournaments, there aren't actually, well, I guess we got rid of 5 and 6, and then they just made it A through H. Uh, which might be interesting. So, yeah, I, I am down for. I am happy about this though because <laughs> I'm finally in the quote-unquote good pool. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is the map. It's welcome to the Thunderdome. Um, it's based basically almost entirely around ferrying units from uh, your bases here to the mainland with um, your transports. And you would think, <laughs> you would think since I'm so bad with uh, transports that this would this map would be the bane of my existence, but actually um, I had a pretty good <laughs> idea of what to do for once on a transport map. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, the other thing is that's great about this map is you've got these recons in the corners here, which basically what they allow you to do is see not only how many time what your opponent's bringing in terms of like landers and black boats, like um, they can see as far as like there. So if you land there with a lander and then put your you can put, like, a vehicle there so that your opponent can't see it. So if you, like, want to put in, like, a sneaky neotank or something, you can do that. Um, but the other important thing about these recons is they actually block out the um, airports as well. So what that means is uh, <laughs> you can basically see what your opponent's doing with their air units, with their land units, whatever they're bringing. So you can respond pretty quickly to whatever they decide to do. So that's fun. I mean, you basically just got four little quadrants here. Uh, you land from here, you got your couple of cities, your, your um, comm tower to take over, and then you've also got your lab. So there's the center lab as well, which is important in Sammy matches because it it's one more thing for your, your, your opponent to have to capture with Victory March. Um, and yeah. There's also a bunch of pipe seams here, which can be blown open, like, what I was going to do eventually, once I had money, um, and enough firepower was just blast open this pipe seam with a bomber and then go for their production centers over here. <laughs> be pretty cheeky like that. Um, like, you can just bomber and then, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Well, you can go transport. You put the transport there, put them on the transport, and then you get a bomber. So you can get, you can bomb this, then transport copter your infantry to like either this city or even like onto the mountain, and then you can see if they build anything in response. Which like, if you have one infantry by itself, it's not gonna be able to do that much, but with a bomber support, you might be able to make a little bit of an inroad, especially with like Sammy. Um, after power, like, I'm just saying. <laughs> Not bad at all. Uh, and with the transport copter, you can block any, like, ant team if they decide to build that day, basically, so. 
Um, but yeah, but <laughs> without any further ado, I think I've already got. Well, actually, I, have a, I need to go over the map, the map analysis still. So, um, it's a labs map, meaning that what you see here is what you get. So, sixty total properties on the board, four com towers, um, meaning thirty k income per player at par. Uh, for income, well, it's a two com tower map, so that also makes it a little bit more, a little bit easier for Sammy to get inroads because all she needs to do is take a third com tower and then she's at 20. So that makes com towers pretty, like, it's, since it's a two com tower and it's Sammy's on the board, it's pretty decent. Um, I've seen, well, actually, so. Let's go to the rules for this one. Well, I'm actually the ban list. So it's tier four for this first match, right? Sammy is impeccable because there's four, um, there's four bases per player. So like you can just infantry spam to all hell and then you can just victory march your way to victory. <laughs> uh, but I've also seen Jess play pretty aggressively as well here. and. The reason why Jess is really good on this map is because um, you're also, a lot of what you're going to be doing on this map is just vehicle spam. So because your opponent's going to have a hard time getting their battlecopters around or any air units, like you can respond to air units pretty easily if, um, uh, because all you have to do is uh, wait for them to move them into range of, well, they need to move past your recons. <laughs> in order to get anywhere right so you can see them there with Jess like the, the thing about Jess that is amazing on this map is she can just spam tanks neo tanks um well neo tanks even medium tanks a little bit but also anti-air and anti-air is really good on this map because it basically means that if your opponent builds a battlecopter it's useless <laughs> because this uh center area is so fucking um close together that a anti-air basically covers this entire area makes it a no-fly zone no-fly zone and battle copters are basically useless um unless you spam them a little bit but and like you do have the income to spam them a little bit because um yeah you, you you can spam them a little bit because you have the uh battle copters here and then you you have the landers so you can only get you can only really get um, vehicles every t two turns, right? So you're gonna be basically doing one turn of tanks, one turn of battlecopters plus infantry, adding an anti-air where you want, um, and then heavier vehicles where you want it's in place of the uh, battlecopters. But yeah, I think Jess is actually a really good pick as well. Um, other than that, well, actually, Grim is 48%. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, to be honest, Grim actually is kind of scary now that I think about it, because, uh, well, I was going to say, because most people are going to be playing Sammy, and that's going to make it so that um, his tanks will just demolish Sammy's tanks, but he's, he doesn't have defense, so it's, Sammy's tanks are actually decent against him. Um, Adder... No, Adder's not good in this map. It's basically just a Sammy map. Uh, and then there's a little bit of Jess you could have as the, uh, the underdog pick. And Jess is pretty good. I've seen pretty good Jess play on this map as well. Um, but Sammy overall is going to be able to just, like, having Sammy's extra capture is insane on this map, especially against someone like Jess, so. As long as you don't allow your opponent, your Jess opponent to build up, uh, vehicles like they would want to do, then you're going to be, like, home free, basically. Um, but without any further ado, let's get on with the replay. So, starting out here, well, we're going to be going for um, the second basis, obviously. 
But starting out here, we're going to be wanting to get the black boats over here to start ferrying infantry over as soon as possible. Um, I'm more so prioritizing these properties before the center ones because I know that all, I'm, all that I'm going to need at the end of the day um, in this area is vehicles. And I can use the landers to ferry the infantry over as well anyways. So I don't need to worry about wasting time for on the first couple of turns by um, moving around my black woods. I'm saving a little bit, bit of fuel maybe, but yeah, as you can see there, I'm just waiting for the infantry to make their way over here and then finally taking them over. This is my main idea, basically. So now I'm moving to, into black woods so that they can start burying over the infantry. Um, So yeah, we're just basically getting infantry on the ground to start out with. He's going for a recon pretty early on, um, which is good play because all that's in this area is going to be infantry. So having a recon in this area will be like incredibly helpful because it'll basically, for a couple of turns, it'll uh, have basically be uncontested in the center here. So which is, which is why I'm also going for a recon so that I can Scout out everything, basically. Oh my god, come on. Yeah. That's gonna pop up a lot because there it's just there's transports on this map, so it's gonna be annoying. Uh the other thing about recons is actually they do have a, a sort of bad start because they're dropped in the middle of these planes, right? So like the first turn they're not gonna be able to do too too much. But they can make it to like this city, so They'll be able to move in pretty presently in like a turn or so. He's going for a second recon, which I don't know if that's the best move here. But it's a move. I forget what I do actually. I feel like I might base it for a tank. Well actually no, I'm not going to base it for a tank, because I know I can just do it um next turn get the tank and i'll have enough for two tanks plus infantry so i'm not gonna waste my time on a tank that i can't even uh move in yet basically that's the idea am i gonna have a tank on both sides to ward off any crazy recon plays because as long as you stay relatively close to the center here with your infantry you're not gonna be able to you're not gonna really deal with much to, at the beginning of the day being um, as far as like recon attacks go um yeah so he he went pretty aggressively to grab this comm tower to start out with which i think that ended up being a really bad move for him because it cost him this infantry pretty early on um and i don't think it really gave him much overall because like I'm going to be able to take this comm tower no matter what he does here. Because his recon's not going to be able to stop this cap. Because Sammy, right? Um, so what he should have probably done was go for the income here. Because that'll give him more to, more money, basically. And if more money means more infantry or better better like vehicles and stuff. Right, so I'm obviously going tank, tank. I'm going to have the tanks on the mainland in a turn from now. So if he wants to move in for recons, he's going to have a bad time. And he's actually going to go for the interrupt here, but like, it's Sam infantry. You can't really interrupt them after they get their first cap. And he's actually going for a battlecopter already. Um, which isn't the greatest move. It's, <laughs> it's turn seven. Honestly, I feel like most of the time... Unless you have like crazy good income over your opponent, you don't want to do, um, you don't want to waste money on an early battle copter like this because, like, <clears throat> anti air, especially against Sammy, like, anti air is going to be much more effective than a battle copter. And, like, you know that your opponent's going to be bringing in the anti air, it's not going to end up mattering. I have a recon and a tank here for this side now, so I'm investing pretty evenly on both areas at this point
But yeah, you can see if it tanks, so he's gonna he's gonna fuck off at this point with the recon. Or at least he should leave. He should get out of here. Yeah, that was a bad move. That was a really bad move with his recon there, because not only is like this like it's not even remotely like and he's going super aggressive with this recon as well. Like I don't know what he's doing here. What he thinks he's doing with the recons. But you can't just throw them away like this. Especially on a map like this where there aren't any mountains in the center for you to get vision from. Like that's a dead recon for sure. And I'm guarding my tank, so he can't move in with his tank to counterattack. And he can't even see it anyways, but um yeah, I'm able to take that guy out with the recon. It's out of range of the tank for sure. Unless he moves in with um the infantry, I guess. But I, then I could just get a first strike with this guy on his tank, and that'd be bad for him. So that's the left side taken care of. I've got a tank moving in for next turn. I'm going to be able to do two tanks, I think. But anyways, I take out uh, this tank as well. I mean, this recon as well. So already I'm taking a really early lead because he decided to be really fucking stupid with his recons. Um, and... The important thing about that is I can see everything in this area and he cannot. So, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing double anti or even because I'm not exactly sure where the Balcopters are going to come from. So, um, and I would like to be able to zone out as much of this area as I can air wise. So I'm going double anti for that reason. Uh, now that I see his Battlecopter basically. But I'll have tank anti air next turn. So, so far, pretty good build order. He goes for that. I don't even know why he did that. That was, that was another really bad move from him. Because I'm going to get a good first strike with my tank here. No. For basically free, I'm just going to be throwing away this infantry, maybe. But it's injured anyways, so like it's not going to be able to do much by itself anyways. So, I don't know. <laughs> now, that to be fair, it is in the forest, so we're not going to be doing too much to each other here. Um, but I am still getting the first strike, so, yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't, I got the bad luck roll there, so that made it that, oh, it didn't even? I feel like I'd round it up, but, uh, there might be a point of luck damage somewhere that I'm missing. I'll assume that. But yeah, I'm able to move in pretty aggressively here with the recon because um, what I want to do here is try for the cap on the um, comm tower, maybe. I think is what I want to go for, is just be aggressive there. Um, because all I see was this. I, I don't really see the tank at this point, but if he wants to move in for the tank, he can move in with the tank. That's fine. Yeah, I move in. Okay, I scouted that with that guy. Okay. So, there's a battle copter. He's taking out my t a recon there, which I was being a bit aggressive there, to be fair. So, I got punished for that. But I do have recons um, everywhere else, so that's fine. Okay, he takes out that infantry, but, like, whatever. That's fine, because I've got enough pressure uh, vehicle-wise built up at this point that I don't need to worry about it too much. I and mean, he's just doing a uh, battlecopter spam at this point. So I figure I may as well build some of my own just so that I don't fall too behind on in account. But like, it's not a good move at all for him to be moving in like this with... Um, With, with all of these battle copters, it's too many battle copters for this early on. But take him off of the comm tower. Not that that matters all that much. I have infantry on these mountains, so does he. So we have a little bit of extra vision from the mountain of uh, this area, but it's not going to end up mattering too much, I don't think. I mean, yeah, just going for his infantry as much as I can. I've got basically entire... Basically, I can do whatever I want with this anti -air. If he moves in with the uh, Battlecopter here on, against this tank, I can just counter with the anti-air. 
At least that's the idea. He could maybe attack from the comp tower, which would be annoying, but I don't really need to <laughs> worry about that because I would like um, to guard both of these areas is the idea. So he's getting a mech as well here. Um, when he just puts it into the um, the whack boat, which it, I mean, I guess he could move it in now if he wants, but yeah. he gets a decent push here, but like my infantry line is going to be able to hold because um, it's Sammy vehicle firepower, so it's not going to be that crazy. Come on. Oh, he put that into, uh, oh yeah, he, he decided to just put it out with a bat, black blood at this one, which isn't bad. Um, it's only got any tanks that I would be pushing with at this, in this area, so. Um, putting this mech here by itself is like enough to ward off any idea of me pushing from this flank, uh, flanking him from this side, basically, with vehicles. So I'm just, I just decided to push everywhere else, basically. Okay. So I pop a couple things here. I take out the Battlecopter. Because I'm on the road, I'm kind of assuming that I'm losing it at this point. Because he does have the tank in the area, so... And it's, like, not the greatest, but it'll have to do for now, basically. Um, this guy's out of range of his tank, so there's not much he can do about it. Um... Taking out those guys, I've got, I've got a cap here on this property for next turn that he can't really do anything about, so I'm about to break par as far as um, these properties go. And since he's already capped all of his properties and I still have to get this one, I'm definitely ahead in income at this point. Uh, I'm going for a cap here. Not really because I'm expecting to get it, but mostly to draw away the vehicles from this area so that I can move in um, and take him out next turn if uh, possible. Uh, do I have recon? I didn't get a recon in this area to replace the one I lost yet, but... Um, well, I moved it left. <laughs> instead of just keeping in this area. But I've got another one here, so I can see a little bit, at least. So that's pretty good for me. He takes out, he's gonna be keep on pushing pretty aggressively here because I am overextended a little bit over here. Moving in like that with the Battlecopter. And over here, like he's able to take out the Anteater with the help of the Battlecopter because even though it's at three health, the is still like, it's on a road, right? So that's going to be enough for the battlecopter to finish it off. Uh, he's, he's starting to mech spin a little bit, though, which, <laughs> uh, like, a lot as well. <laughs> um, and he, he did build transport copters to get his infantry from here to here, but right now I'm... Perfectly fine with just leaving the infantry here because I don't really want to spend the 10k on transports. Like, I need it if, as long as I keep on investing it into like tanks and even battlecopters to an extent. But just if I, as long as I have a tank advantage in the center here, I don't need to worry about these two infantry at all. It can just stay in the back. Like, it's a an infantry is worth 1k, right? And you, you're spamming a shitload of them for MVs. Um, these bases anyways, like I'm using them here for um, vision even, so I need to worry too much about that. Popping double time here, like I have a good amount of stuff here, but I'm assuming he's going to get his victory march first, so I go, you know what, the double time, may as well, because uh, double time here actually isn't that bad, I'm able to get an extra bit, it's, it's mainly just for the extra move, because I was able to finish off that guy with that. Um, that's three moves, so he's dead. Um, get the nice first strike on the tank here, actually. No, not quite, because I'm, I'm making, I know he has this mech here, so I need to make sure that, um, not only am I, um, 
keeping my vehicles out of range of his for range, but I'm also trying to make sure that there's no infantry in range of capping any of these properties here for me, because that would that could be bad if he managed to get those for me. So I go for the cap here even, just threatening this so that he can't really move in with um, the battlecopter against my battlecopter if he wants to keep the comm tower. And then I go for the cap here just to give me an extra property here just in case he goes for a crazy um, victory march strat. And then I've got the anti air here. Sort of moving it a bit more centralized so that no matter which battlecopter, where he moves in with a battlecopter, I can still take one of them out next turn, ideally. Uh, more anti air, more tanks. Never recon battlecopter, right? So. Well, at least I'm also at 50 unit count at this point. <laughs> um, which I don't believe is the cap. Let me double check. But. Um, actually. Yeah, no, it's 60. The unit limit is 60. So I'm, I still have like 10 units that I can build. <laughs> this is a very spammy type map, so. Uh, Sammy Spammy, right? Oh, he's not even going for the interrupt here, interestingly, so. Kind of, he's, he's not even popping his victory march either, so he's going to keep that in his back pocket. Ideally, for him, he's going to be doing a good, saving it for a really good push next turn, so. That'd be pretty good. He's got a stealth that he's building here, even. Just like, I mean, okay. Uh, if you're building a stealth in this map because of this recon here, you should really stealth it and then move in with it because that way um, it's a surprise, right? <laughs> uh, but, well, we'll see what my opponent does with it. Stealths aren't even that bad, even. Like, they have four vision, actually, so... And they force your opponent to spend 20k on a fighter, so, like, they're not that bad but yeah, here's a really good push that i have here um basically taking out getting a lot of first strikes on his um tanks finishing off his mech importantly yeah moving in like that honestly i should have attacked with the uh tank fair i think but I wanted to get the tank over here to start warding off. Um, maybe if he decided to push here with his tanks into the infantry, that would have been bad. So, um, and I'm expecting since I'm expecting the victory march next turn, I'm leaving this guy on this property so that he can't just take it. He, he's going to need to invest um, some infantry in order to get me off of there. And then I I did a very aggressive push here with these guys as well to try and get. Um, to try to eliminate as many of these infantry as I could, but it ended up not getting being as effective as I might have hoped. But you you can't win all the win them all basically. So yeah, he takes out a couple of my vehicles there in retaliation, and then he gets his victory march. He honestly should have just popped it immediately because he's got full meter anyways, and he's gonna he's. You can't really wait more than a turn or so to pop it, so. Yeah, he's got two mechs in here. They've got extra defense. He flips of that property, flips of that property. So he's made it back to par, um, but I'm ahead on um, firepower still. I mean, he takes out a good number of my units as well, but. Um, as you will see here, I still have a crazy amount of unit count. Like, he's at 35, I'm at 48, so... Um, it's like, I don't really give a shit at this point, right? Yeah. Actually, he did take the um, income lead, but I'm about to get this property back. I'm also about to flip this property, because he didn't do anything about this capture either. So... <laughs> Um, I'm actually ahead in income after his victory march. And he revealed his stealth by not um, 
hiding it before moving it past my recon. So I'm going to be able to move in like crazy easily to deal with that. Because I have plenty of money to deal with this stealth. Um, take out most of his mech there. They got that mech as well. Uh, my battlecopter and the re um, anti-air coming in handy here. So, getting a, going for a cap here, going for another cap over here. And these are mainly... I'm not really necessarily expecting to get these caps, but if I get them, it's good. Uh, the main thing that I'm trying to do is draw him into attacking me here, because I have got some vehicles in the back which are ready to move in. And I'm also... Capping over here as well, so uh, trying to basically draw him in all directions if I can. Just pretty basic, uh, <laughs> um, mixed base strat. Obviously, I have the fighter in the back here because he revealed his stealth kind of stupidly. Like if you're gonna, if you're not gonna hide your stealth like that, at least like. There's no point in hiding it. It's an extra three fuel per turn. So. Um, to be fair, well, um, he's got enough black boats in this area to repair this guy, but it's not going to matter, like, fuel-wise. He actually did build a second one so that I couldn't move in on this harbor, because that would have been devastating to him. Because <laughs> it, it would have basically just cut off his reinforcements if I had had a unit on there. <laughs> um, and then he just goes ahead to resign. So, <laughs> yeah. 53 26. Um, I will say. Um, stealth was a bad idea. The Battlecopter spam was also kind of a bad idea. Um, especially early on. Like, what you need to do to start out with is get at least a good amount of tanks on the ground. Um, and then I just reacted by spamming Battlecopters when he spammed Battlecopters. What he could have done as well was tech up to a um, medium tank or a neo tank in either of these areas and then deal with that that way. But uh, by him spamming Battlecopters like, like this, that basically made it so that all I had to do was pop... Uh, bring in some anti airs and because i know he's spending money on the battle coppers instead of like expensive units i don't really need i didn't really need to worry about a surprise neo tank or something coming in right um so yeah the battle copter spam it's not it's not exactly difficult to, to deal with especially with sammy's reduced firepower like i know you have a plus 10 technically but like still not going to be doing enough to like uh, push effectively, especially with the anti-air on the ground. If like all you need in this map is like an anti-air here and an anti-air here, and that just invalidates the battle cultures entirely. Um, and then I also like because my opponent was spamming so many battle coppers, I had to start making a couple myself. But I had the income to be able to afford that, and he didn't. So. That was the real issue for him. Uh, also, freaking using double time to win a Sammy, like... <laughs> double time is... Um, I feel like it's severely underrated. Because, especially if you're going against anyone who knows what they're doing. Um, or if they're prepared for a victory march, like... You can surprise people with victory march, because it does... Especially on higher income maps like this. Um, it can charge up relatively quickly, but if you're playing against someone who's also playing Sammy, like you can't you can't just bank on the victory march. So double time does have a lot of utility, especially on a smaller map. Because it that one infantry move does end up being really good for you. Um, it, it basically just it's sort of like a mini victory march because uh because of Sammy's extra 50% capture um, she can just put units onto the city, have them capture, and then if you don't deal with them, they just capture next turn. Even if you send, like, a vehicle against them, um, like, 
a tank into a Sammy capturing with double time. It's still not enough to um, interrupt. Maybe even an anti-air. Well, an anti-air maybe might be able to. <laughs> but you, like, Sammy only needs to do... Um... An extra five, so... Uh, I'm not sure if it's four or three that needs just she needs to stay on at least. I'm assuming it's four, but even like with an anti-air attack with a with two com powers, like there's no way that this works with one. No, like that doesn't interrupt. Two com powers, there's a chance it doesn't even interrupt. Like double time is really good. It's really really good. <laughs> it's very underrated too. Like it's only three. Um, charge, right? So you can you can charge up to like almost full and you'll have enough for two, maybe even three double times in a row if you want to. Um, Victory March is powerful though. It is very, very powerful. So it's very situational as to which you want to use, but you, you sort of want to charge up your entire meter and then choose which one you want. Uh, but that being said, <laughs> that's it for today's tournament episode. Um, Right now, well, I mean, there's going to be one next week, but right now I'm waiting on the third round to start. So next week's one might be the last one for a, quite a little while. You'll have to make do with um, <laughs> my Fire Emblem up as well as on Wednesday for a little while, maybe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically it for today. So if you enjoyed, please go ahead and give a like and a subscribe and all that other nonsense. Um... Yeah, and no, we'll see you guys next week with the next one. So, or on Friday for Road to 1K. Well, it'll be Road to 1.2 next week. <laughs> but this week, this week it's still 1.1. Um, season 5 next week. Anyways. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. <laughs> I sh I'll, I'll go ahead and end. <laughs> see you guys later.